following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Run Ingwas. The Rune Ingwas is one of those runes that, as the previous one, the Perth teaches a lot. <coughs> this rune is uh, represented by a square, or a square which is between two gibors. So you can see both uh, symbols in the graphics. And uh, as uh, in the previous lecture or previous lectures, Again, we are addressing the Aztec calendar to show you that the masters that chisel this stone were really masters that knew about the runes. The Aztec calendar and the pyramids of Egypt as the pyramids of Yucatan or Aztec pyramids were made by masters in the golden age and uh, left us in order to study it. As you see, it is necessary to know Kabbalah and alchemy in order to go into these uh, symbols that are very popular in this day and age in which all the esotericism, the occultism, is uh, surf surfacing our minds. If you observe the center of the Aztec calendar, which is torn at you, you will discover with astonishment that it has four inguas or four squares around the face of Tonatiu. Four squares which are always uh, pointing <coughs> at the circle or they are protruding from the circle showing the quadrature of the circle. This rune relates, of course, to the activity of the fire. We explained in many lectures about how the center of the Aztec calendar, which symbolizes the sun, S-U-N, encloses a lot of mysteries that we are disclosing for you 
And uh, the rune Ingwas is showing us in this uh, graphic how the solar light enters into activity. Or in other words, how the word enters into activity. Remember that the mouth of Tonatiu and uh, his tongue symbolizes the word. We explained that in previous lectures. And of course, the Inguas is showing us how the word enters into activity. Due to the fact that the squares around the face of Tonatiu are like ray of, rays of light coming from it. This is how you had to visualize it. Now, why is a square? Because the solar light works in nature. The four elements. The square symbolizes the four elements. So, the earth itself, Malkut, represents the four elements. And that's why the sun is the one that is given the strength, the light, the life to the earth. <coughs> that's why ancient initiates represented the earth as a flat square. That flat square, of course, represents the rune ingwes, which means that the solar light enters into activity through the square, which are the four elements. That's why we said in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29, for our God is a consuming fire. That fire that we are talking about is a solar fire. And in you inquire about the name of the rune Ingress, it is also called Ing, I-N-G, which relates to the god Frey, or as a uh, Wagner calls him in his opera, The Ring of the Nibelungen, Fro, F-R-O-H. So the Nordic alphabet states that Fro or Frey is associated with Ing, which means son of And if you observe the English language, you will see how that son of, that ing of Frey, which is Balder, is another name for it, uh, from the Nordic Trinity. Odin, Balder, Thor, or Wotan is Odin. So Balder is Frey. Of Fro. His feminine aspect is Freya, that we always state is associated with Friday, but also Frey is associated with Friday, which is Venus, the day of Venus. And of course, we always see how Venus is the star that appears before the sun rises and before the sun sets because it's the sun of the light which is of course the representation of the sun remember that the s-o-n sun is the offspring of the sun s-u-n which is the solar light <coughs> and you see that in our language english for instance, talk. But when I exercise the action of 
to talk, I said talking, and I add ENG at the end. That means action of the word. So the rune is telling us how the action of the word enters through the word, through the verb as well. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. But in order for God, which is the word, to make, to do things, it is the activity of the son, of, which is ing, fray, Christ, in other words, as we call it in, in Greek. So every single word, every single verb, in order to put it into activity, we said, walking, going, acting, transmuting. One thing is to know about the science of transmutation, and another thing is transmuting, to do the action of that science. One thing is to know how to die, and another thing is to die or dying, to do what we know. <coughs> because the law of Christ is sacrifice. It is stated that the Son of the Father performs the will of God. He is the one that performs the will of God. So if we want to perform the will of God, we need to study the rune inguas. Because that will is doing, is the son of ing. In the, in the Spanish language, for instance, we add ando, which means to walk, comes from the verb andar in our words. We said, for instance, uh, hablar is to talk. Hablando is the action of the verb. Sometimes it's endo or ando, but means to do it, to walk. I don't know in other language, but in English, ing means to do it. And this is precisely what you have to see and to understand in this rune. Because the sun is the one that does the experiment in nature. It is stated by the master Samael on the or that the sun is performing a experiment in nature. In nature is represented by the square. So Ing was is doing that. And of course, that's why in the center of the Aztec calendar, you see the four previous outcomes <coughs> of the sun. That's why it is stated that they said that the children of the first sun were devoured by the tigers. The children of the second sun, which is here on the left above, uh, were destroyed by strong hurricanes and cyclones. The children of the third sun were uh, devoured by uh, fire from, from heaven. And the fourth sun, which is the Atlantean civilization, were devoured by the waters. In synthesis, we see, of course, the four elements around the face of Tonatiu. But this rune is directly related with the fire. The activity of the fire. When we see ing is fray, is balder, is fro, that enters into activity in nature. Without the activity of the solar light, there will be no life on earth. And this is what we have to understand. So the Lord enters into us in order to activate the energy that we already have in our bodies, minds, consciousness, etc. 
It is why we always state that Gnosis is a practical knowledge, not theories. We learn, of course, we see the map of the path, but then we have to enter into the inguas in order to put it into activity. If you see, the other sign of the inguas is formed by the square in the middle and six kaums around it. The rune kaun, as I told you many times, is a vertex like that, or a vertical line with a line in this way, like the letter K without the other line in the bottom, an open angle. So Kaun is a feminine rune, which is above, below, and to the sides of the square. That is showing us that the Inguas receives in order to act. That precisely the, the activity of the Lord Christ. We have to receive energy, and with that we have to activate in the, the four elements in us. So that, of course, that's why we said our God is a consuming fire, because God is fire, is energy that we receive. And of course, <coughs> if you uh, associate this rune with a previous rune, you will see here how it is represented by the chalice, by the Holy Grail, again. We find this graphic in which we show how the square or the four parts of the square are in the center, in the steam of the, of the chalice. It has four figures there. You don't see the other two, but you have to imagine that they have the other two behind it. So that is square. And above, we find, of course, the rune Kaun, which is a V, receiving the force of heaven. And the other rune Kaun, below, receiving the force of the earth. Again, that is our physicality. Because from the throat up, we find the cup that contains the forces from heaven. If you see in the graphic of the tree of life, you find how the square is in the center. Uniting three sephiroth. That, Hesed, Gebura, and Tifereth. Below Tifereth, we have a upside down Kaun, or if you want, we also can say that is the rune R, which is the Ara, which is the altar upon which the Holy Grail always rests. If you know about any type of ritual, <coughs> you will bring into your mind that the altar is a square. It's a square. So in that square, on top of that square, which is a, and really a cubic stone formed by many squares, but on top of that stone or that altar, you find the Holy Grail which is precisely related with the rune R, which is the open legs from in the A, Ara, 
the altar. The master Samael on the earth talks extensively about the rule R in relation with the signs of Peter, which is the stone. This is something that we have to understand. Peter is in the pineal gland, controlling the stone. And then also working in the heart. But specifically here, we see how this uh, chalice is related with all the ten sephiroth of the tree of life. The cup of the chalice, the very base of that is the sephira da'at, and goes towards Bina and towards Chokhmah. In order to receive the light of Keter and beyond, because above Keter is the Ains of Or, the Ains of, and the Ain, the light of the unknowable God. Or, as we say in, in uh, Gnosticism, the light of Barbelo. Remember that the Gnostic Bible, the pieces of here, talk about Barbelo. Remember that Bar means sun and Bel means tower of fire. So the sun of that tower of fire, the sun of that light, of course, is received by the rune ingwas in the upper V of the cup. It symbolizes that chalice we always receive from above into our head. That's the work that we have to perform in order to ing, in order to act, in order to do. But also you observe that the lower R, or the rune R, or what is an upside down kaun as well, is receiving the strength of the sexual energy, Yasod, and the strength of the earth. Because in the last synthesis, Yasod and Malkut are one, Sephira. So here we find how the rune Inguas, or Ingus, is telling us how we receive and how do we work with these forces when we are walking on the path. People only sometimes identify with the cup of the chalice and they forget that the chalice has a base. We need to receive also the strength of the earth as we receive the strength of heaven. Because in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Hmm? So we need to receive that energy. Because the Lord, the solar force, Christ, descends from the unknowable divine, from the regions of Barbello, down to all the ten Sephiroth, until Malkut. So in Malkut, which is our physicality, is where we have that energy. So when we enter in this path, we have to work with two forces. And this is what we have to understand. And it's also represented in the Aztec calendar. See, for instance, how the Aztec calendar is showing us the same. Above the head, of Tonatiu, you find a Kaun, which is, of course, by itself the symbol of fire. If you know symbols in alchemy, that triangle, an open triangle like that, symbolizes fire. And if you add a line, crossing line like that, that symbolizes uh, water, I mean air, air. So the triangle above, the, the top of the head, which is like a horn, 
is a symbol of fire. And the cross line is air. So fire and air are always above. That's why in Hebrew, the letter Aleph symbolizes the air. And the letter Shin symbolizes fire. If you put uh, two letters together, we form the word Esh, which is fire. But within that fire is the air. And within that air is the fire. <coughs> That's why it is written that the first emanation of the unknowable, which is called the absolute, is the ray of Okidanok. Is the light of the ends of or, which Madame Blavatsky called it the eternal breath. You see there? Breath is associated with air, but at the same time is fire, is light, which is profoundly unknowable to itself. So that, of course, is represented by that horn on the top of the face of Tonatiu, the sun, which is pointing us to the pineal gland, to the chakra Sahasrara, the chakra of the thousand petals with many rays. Let's go directly into the solar absolute the abode of Barbello, the light of the sun. And this is in our physicality. This is what you have to understand because all of that is in our physical body. So that's why <coughs> you find that the square represents the four elements. Masse Samaelon Beor in his book, The Great Rebellion, states, fire envelops and baits us totally. It comes to us through the air, through the water, and through the earth itself. These are its preservers and its diverse vehicles. The heavenly fire must crystallize within us. It is the intimate Christ our profound innermost savior, Balder, Frey, or Fro, the God of love. If you see in the graphic, you see the four elements forming the square. We already talked about that in previous lecture, how the air relates to Keter, how the water relates to Yesod. And we're talking about the exorcisms. And we talk about how the south is the fire and the north uh, is the earth, related with the tree of life. So this is how we uh, work with these forces. That's why uh, we uh, find one of the graphics of the god uh, Frey or Fro or Ing related with the Ingwas riding a boar a wild pig when I say this it's coming into my mind the three mountains the book of the master Samael on the earth when he talk about the heaven of Venus, in which Hercules, that we know already is Gebura, conquers Venus by dominating and killing the boar of Arimatus, which represents the wild animal instincts in us. Obviously, 
Christ, which is here represented as the god Fro or Balder, rides on the boar, meaning that is controlling the animal forces, the instinctual forces. This is what we have to do. We have to ride on the boar and later on to kill it. People in this day and age, they don't ride on the board. They don't control their animal forces. What they do is to eat boar, which is no good for us. Even though Hercules, when he killed the boar of Arimathus, he ate it after that. He ate it him. But that is a symbol of the energy that we had to get from that animal. Every time that we comprehend an animalistic, instinctual animal in us, represented by this boar, we obtain the energy of the earth, you see? Because the force of the earth is that boar, which is called, of course, uh, uh, in, in Hebrew, this big animal, uh, doesn't come to my mind. Behemoth. Behemoth. A great behemoth. Which is like a boar as well. If you see it in symbol. It's a force that we have here in this area. Because the area of Venus is related with the negative emotions. That we have to transform into positive emotions. It's related with the Sephira Hod. The light of Hod, the prince of the astral light, is of course Anael, represented in this case by Fro or Balder. Energy that we have to control. That's why the Master Samael says, Christ is the fire of the fire, the flame of the flame, the astral signature of fire. Upon the cross of the martyr of Calvary, the mysteries of Christ is defined in one word, consisting in four letters. In re. Ignis natura renovator integra, which means fire renews nature incessantly. Now, the advent of Christ into the heart of the human being transforms us radically. Christ is the solar logos, the perfect multiple unity. Christ is life which beats throughout the entire universe. Christ is what is, what always has been, and what shall always be. Much has been said about the cosmic drama. Without a question, this drama is made up of four Gospels. Well, four Gospels. Why? Because the square represents the four uh, elements. When we want to see the fire of the fire, well, we have to put a bonfire, and the fire of the fire is within that bonfire. But also the fire is within the water, within the air, within the earth. That's why the Master said that the fire surrounds us everywhere. That's why God is a consuming fire. So we have to control it. So, here we find something very interesting in order for us to comprehend about the rune Inguas, which is related always with the number four, the square. And the way in which we uh, take advantage of the forces of nature. In the Pistis Sophia, we find in one of his books, I mean, one, because the Pistis Sophia is formed by six books. Don't remember which book it is, but if you have the Pistis Sophia, you will find it. You will find that Jesus said unto his disciples, 
draw near unto me. And they drew near unto him. He turned himself toward the four corners of the world, said the great name, Yehu, over their heads, blessed them, and breathed into their eyes. Jesus said unto them, Look up and see what ye may see with your clairvoyance. Of course, if you read the, that paragraph, you will see that Master Jesus is turning himself toward the four corners of the world. <coughs> to the east, to the west, to the south, to the north. Behold the square again. Then, of course, he said to his disciples, the word Yehu, you remember that we explained, we gave a lecture related with that word, Yehu, which is formed by the letters Yod, Hey, Vav. Yehu. This is how you, you, how you write it. And relates to the three primary forces. Keter, Chochma, Bina. That's Yehu. So, in our physicality, where is Yehu or Jew? It is, of course, in the magnetic center of the root of our nose, which we find the atom of the Father. And then we find the atom of the Son in the pituitary gland. And the atom of the Holy Spirit in the pineal gland. Behold there. Your own physical heaven. There is where you have Yehu. Which is a power that unites the three primary forces. Positive, negative and neutral. Of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Now, when you read... He blessed them and pronounced that Jehu in, his, in their faces or in their eyes. He blew in their eyes like that. Jehu. He is, of course, invoking the forces that are in the pineal gland, in the pituitary gland, and the root of your nose. Because there is Jehu in your physicality. And now it says... Look up and see what you may see. If you don't know how to read, he says, look up, you will see to the ceiling or to the sky. No, when you say look up with your clairvoyant eye, you just raise your eyes. You make it like this. How do you call the cross eyes? Exactly in the clairvoyant eye. Eye. Calibon eye is between the eyebrows. Look up and see what you see. You see? With your chakra agna. People, when they read these things, things oh, look at the sky, there are clouds there, an aeroplane passing, a bird flying. No! It's your heaven, your, your own head. Look up there. What do you see? Of course, the disciples were clairvoyants. And then we see, we see a mighty light. That mighty light is the light of Keter, the crown chakra, and beyond. Remember that we said the macrocosmos is represented by Arikamping. And that Arikamping is Keter, the head of the Trinity. So when you concentrate in the head of the Trinity, Keter, the father of all the lights, and you see up with your clairvoyant eye, and then you see the light of lights. You see the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the cosmic Christ. Hmm? And they raised their eyes and saw a great, exceedingly mighty light which no man in the world can describe. That's the light of Barbello on top of your head. 
that you can see because the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, and the root of your nose, there, the three atoms, open your clairvoyant eye and see that marvelous light that connects your monad to the absolute. That light is what we call the Glorian. Your own particular individual Glorian that enters in your pineal gland, in your chakra Sahasrara. He said unto them anew, Look away out of the light and see what ye may see. Look to the other side. So when you look away out of that light, which connects to the absolute, which connects to the unknowable divine, where other way, are you, what is the other side that you can see? The other side is you. Because that side is a macrocosmos. And you are the microcosmos. So this is what you have to understand. Look away out of that light, the microcosmos, and see what you may see this in you. And then you have to turn your side towards you. Your inside. And they said, we see. Fire, water, wine, and blood. If you don't know Kabbalah, you don't know what is that fire, blood, and dirt, etc. Let me show you the tree of life again. In order for you to understand. There in the tree of life is where we rot. Inside of the rune Ingwas. The fire. Really with that. Why with that? Because the fire is the letter Shin. That represents the Holy Trinity as well. In Aleph, also is the Trinity as well. The breath. So when you talk about the breath, it's about the fire and the air. Created with that. Because there they join. The mystery of the tree of good and evil. Below that, you find Hesed and Geburah. Hesed relates to the water and Geburah to the wine and the blood to the heart, which is Tifereth. Here, you see very clear that you are seeing your individuality, your monad, in other words. Because the microcosmos is related with the monad in all its parts. And of course, in Kabbalah, in alchemy, we know that the water relates to Hesed, which many times we said is that spirit that floats upon the face of the waters. That mercury. Then the wine is Geburah. The fruit of the wine, which is, uh, how do you call the plant? Great plant, you know, there's a name for it. It's like uh, wine, right? That relates to the physicality. The wine of the transubstantiation relates to Geburah. Because when we talk about the wine, we talk about the fire within the wine, which relates to the transubstantiation. That's the mysteries of Geburah. And the water, the fire within the water, and the blood, the fire within the blood. Many times we said that the blood is also fire. So here you find the mystery of the microcosmos, the monad, in other words. So, what the scripture says in Pistis Sophia, that they saw fire, water, wine, and blood. If you don't know the mysteries of al alchemy, you might think that they're seeing an altar. But remember, the altar is related with the monad in, in the second triangle. 
The second triangle is the triangle of the monad, the spirit, the being, and below. So continue with what the Master Jesus says. Jesus, that is Averamento, his sacred name, said unto his disciples, Amen, I say unto you, I have brought nothing into the world, into this physicality, which is our physical body, when I came, save this fire, this water, this wine, and this blood. This is all the power of the monad, together with the Lord. Because the Lord is fire and descends from that into the monad. In order for the Lord to descend into anybody, into any initiate, that initiate has to reach at least Tifereth, which is the human soul. And in order to enter into the human soul, the initiate has to reach that level, the fifth initiation. And then the Lord can bring into that world, created, into that pistis, as we said in the previous lecture, the elements that we read here, the water, the wine, the blood, and the fire. And he says, I have brought the water and the fire out of the region of the lights of lights, of the treasury of the light. And I have brought the wine and the blood out of the region of Barbello. The region of Barbello, the ends of Or, which is the unknowable divine, from that region is where comes the pure fire of the Lord, descends from that region, which is the ends of Or, or the area of Okidanok, the Glorian, and enters into the Holy Trinity and forms the letter Shin, which is fire. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And from there, Chokhmah, which means wisdom, which is also Sophia in Greek, descends. Many times, in different apocrypha, they talk about the descension or the descent of Sophia into the world from the 13th eon. What is this Sophia that comes from a 13th eon? Remember that the 13th eon is Ain, the nothingness. The 12th is the Ain Sof, the limitless. And the 11 is the Ain Sof Or. The limitless light. He said that Sophia comes, or that wisdom, that Chokhmah descends from the Ain. But that Sophia that descends from Ain is Sophia, is wisdom, is the essence of those that reach Paramartha. You see, this word here is very important. Sanskrit. Paramartha. Absolute awakened consciousness. Martha. We talked about Martha in the previous lecture. That is a humble disciple of the Lord that do always the different shores in order for the Lord to have energy. He cooks, I mean, she cooks for the Lord. And Martha is related, of course, we said, to the stomach, right? But don't think that Martha is the stomach, the, just the flesh. No. The intelligence that transforms the food in the stomach humbly works there like a servant. Even if you put garbage in your mouth, into your stomach, she takes it and cook it, takes and make it in honey. That's Martha. 
It's that consciousness that you have to conquer. Because she is humble. She does it. Without your intervention in your physicality. But a walker of the path had to work with that Martha. That consciousness which is completely awakened. In order to enter into the para, the absolute, to acquire, to acquire absolute consciousness, para Marta. In Sanskrit, that absolute is called also sat. Sat, the absolute. From that word comes the word satya, which is an inhabitant of the absolute. And we call it para. Martha Satya, the one that has conquered Martha, hmm? that is a humble worker. And only by conquering Martha, you enter into the absolute. That's why it is stated that Martha takes the, the hand of the initiate in order to enter into the Ain and to become a para Martha Satya. So behold that Martha up there. And that Martha is also related with the Sephirah Hod here, which is already related with your emotions. Remember that we have to transform the negative emotions. Martha never lies, always says the right thing. So the superior emotions. Or the negative emotions in this, time, in this case have to be transformed. Because we poison ourselves with negative emotions. That's why Martha is related with the Sephira Hod. Which is also related with our blood. Martha is there with the Lord in the blood. Martha is there in the stomach. Martha is there in the consciousness. Is that awakened consciousness. So that consciousness of the Paramartha Satya is the one that descends from the 13 Ian. Those monads are already there inside. And because they self realize themselves, they can help. Like Master Jesus, who is a Paramartha Satya, an inhabitant of the Absolute. He descended from the 13th year in order to help. So when that Sophia from the 13th year descends, that Paramartha enters into the womb of the Ain Sof, which is the own manifested mother. And from that own manifested mother emerges the ray of Okidanok, which is Barbello. This is the ascension of Martha or Sophia into the world and when entering into the Trimurti Father, Son and Holy Spirit becomes Chokhmah and Chokhmah descends from the Holy Spirit into that which is the fire in that the individual is already there who is Pistis Pistis is related with faith but also related with the intellect but better said, superior intellect. Because pistis relate to the inferior manas and superior manas, which are the two vehicles that we have to build in order to reach the level of human being. Once we reach the level of human being with these two inferior and superior manas or intellect or mind, then pistis is already created. And when pistis is already created, Sophia enters. And we have the pistis Sophia, which is the Bodhisattva, the son of man. And of course, that Sophia that descends from the 13th Ian is descending into that initiate in order to make of him a solar man. 
That is ing. Inguas. The activity of the word from the unknowable to the knowable. You see that? That's ing, or fray, or fro, balder, the Christ. First coming from the very bottom, bosom of the Father and appear, appearing into the universe. And that's why the Lord suffers. Because when he, he enters into the Bodhisattva, he, that Sophia mingles with pistis, with the soul, in other words. Because the human soul is pistis. The mental body is pistis. Astral body is pistis. That soul is electronic bodies, which form the consciousness in the initiate. And goes beyond that and enters into the chaos. What chaos? What chaos? Your infra consciousness, your subconsciousness, your own consciousness. This is the sacrifice of the Lord in the Bodhisattva. In order to perform what P.C. Sophia, the Bible of the Gnostics, call the 13 repentances. One by one, done by Sophia, together with Pistis. Better said in Christian terms, John the Baptist, together with Jesus. Jesus is the Savior, Sophia, and John the Baptist is Pistis, the man made, the terrestrial man. And this is how you understand what Jesus says. That he brought the fire, <coughs> the water, the blood, and the wine from the region of the light. But he mingles there because that is a monad. The fire is that, the water is Chesed, the wine is Geburah, and the blood is Tifereth. And together is where you form the altar in you. And he says, and after a little while, my father sent me the Holy Spirit in the type of a dove. That Holy Spirit, of course, in the spirit of the water, Bina, that he sends to him in order to do the work with the waters. And the fire, the water, and the wine are for the purifications of all sins of the world. The blood, on the other hand, was for a sign unto me because of the human body which I receive in the region of Barbello, or the great power of the universal God, or the invisible God. The breath. On the other hand, advance them towards all souls and lead them unto the region of the light. The breath, we talk about birth. What is that breath that takes us to the region of the light when we know how to transmute, to work? That's why we insist that the Lord works in three aspects in us and doing that transformation. The Lord needs the, the water, which is, of course, the mercury of the wise in us. The Lord needs the wine, the fruit of the grapevine. That is the name of the plant, grapevine. So that grapevine, of course, symbolizes it up in Gala, the fire that rises, but also represents the force that comes from above, from Geburah from the spiritual soul, from our own particular monad, which is united with the fire of the Lord. That's why you cannot replace the Eucharist. We need to drink the wine of the grapevine. And that's why uh, we advise you in the previous lecture to read Christification, that lecture which is in the front page of the website, where the Master Samael talks about the importance of the transubstantiation and that has not 
we will not ever, or we should never stop or go against it. Because we need it. Because the work, the work is done through our monad, our being, is the one that does it. But our being needs the wine, needs the fire of the Lord, needs the water or transmutation. And the blood. That is precisely all the symbol of the fire of ing. Because the square that we see in the rune inguas is of course related with this transformation. Behold here the graphic of Martha. Isn't she beautiful? She's dealing with all the food that we have to eat. He said, you, you have to eat fish. You have to eat uh, also birds. You have to eat fruit, cereals, and uh, red meat. That represented in this case by the boar, which is hanging there. But remember that that boar represents the instinctual animalistic forces in ourselves. Don't go and kill any boar and eat it. No. Because that is a devolving animal. But we have to destroy that animal inside of us. But behold, behind her is Mary and Jesus talking pleasantly. Let Martha work. We just keep talking about notice here. And Martha he said, well, I had to do a lot of work. Yeah, you are related with the stomach. You are the intelligence. Keep doing your work, Martha. We need you. We need that intelligence, which is humbleness. Remember for humbleness. Because in relation with the emotions, because she's also related with Hod, the negative emotions. If you don't transform the negative emotions, the negative emotions of pride, vanity, self-esteem, arrogance, and then you think that you can do the work by yourself, and then you don't allow Martha to do it, which is humbleness. Humbleness is necessary in order for the Lord to work through us because the Lord is the holy denying. Deny yourself goes directly into that negative emotion that we have because we always feel in the heart that we are. When somebody tells us you are and then you point your heart, who, me? Is because we feel ourselves in the emotion, in our feelings. And that is Martha, but positive emotions. The negative emotion has to be transformed. And the only one that can do it is Martha. When we allowed the Lord to enter into us and in meditation to do it. But if we are proud, vain, conceited, and think that we are going to do it just by ourselves, and then it says, okay, there is a lot of vanity there. The Lord doesn't enter. The Lord is inside here, you see in this graphic, because Martha is humble. is doing what he has, she has to do. Behind the Lord are the other apostles, waiting there for the, their food to make, to be done, I mean. In order to eat, because the apostles, as we taught in the previous lecture, are related with the endocrine glands in our body. It's not that Peter is a pineal gland. It is like the intelligence of Peter, that archetype is working through the pineal gland. This is how you have to understand it. And this is how you understand Martha. Martha is in the very bottom, in Malkut, which is feminine. Because our physicality is feminine, is Malkut. And the digestive system, Martha. So this painting that we put here is telling us a lot. While we are active here, the Lord is behind, waiting for his food. It's the same thing. We have to feed our body. We have to transform impressions, the emotions of Hod, which also relate to Martha. And we all go back into the top where Martha is waiting for us in order to enter into the absolute. You have to know how to transform good and evil. 
you have to know how to give. Because if you see that graphic, Martha is always giving. He's giving and giving. He's working very hard in the stomach and he's giving. He's working very hard when we transform the negative emotions into positive emotions and always giving. But she receives impressions and transforms them into good. Mm -hmm. It's what she represents. When you will receive negative emotions, the master says, receive them with gladness. Transform them into good. The food is easy to transform it, but the negative emotions is very difficult. Usually we don't transform the negative emotions into food, but into poison. Hatred. Anger. We had to, uh, we had to allow Martha to do the work in the emotional center. If you see that, the stomach is here. The emotional, if your emotion is also here in the, in the stomach, or the solar plex. And this is how the initiate enters the work of Martha, when he allows the superior forces to work in him and know his ego. In this graphic where we see also Frey, the God of love, or the Christ, at the very age of a precipice, in love with Freya. For this cause have I said unto you, said Master Jesus, I am come to cast fire on the earth, that is, I am come to purify the sins of the world with fire. But remember that that fire is in the four elements. Remember the panka tatwa. Panka is five. The fifth element is in our sexual glands. Our own akasha, which is formed what, what we eat. Fire, water, earth, and air. That's the Pankatatwa. And for this cause have I said to the Samaritan woman, If thou knewest of the gift of God and who it is who said unto thee, Give me to drink, thou wilt ask, and, and he will give thee living water, and there will be in thee a spring which welleth up for everlasting life. That well. Is a sexual force. That Samaritan woman is you. It's a woman that is looking for the knowledge in this physical world. It doesn't know how to start. It's a woman that Jesus said unto her, Call your husband and I will tell you the secret of how to drink of this water of life. But the woman was an adulteress, like any one of us. And of course, the cup, I mean, that, that, that water that brings up to everlasting life is a fire within the water of our own mercury, which is our own sexual matter. And for this cause, I took also a cup of wine, symbol of fire in the Eucharist. Because when the priest invoked the fire with special mantras that fire enters into the wine and into the bread especially the wine which is the blood of the Lord and when you drink it guess who transformed that into marvelous solar atoms that will feed your body your psyche and your spirit who does it Martha Martha does it And of course, I blessed it, the cup of wine, <coughs> unto you, and said, This is the blood of the covenant which will be poured out of you for the forgiveness of your sins. Because that light that enters through the Eucharist helps you to understand, because it's all a light 
that enlightens your consciousness in order to comprehend your own ego. And for this cause, they have also thrust the spear into my side. And there came for water and blood. The water relates to that mercury of Hesed, and the blood to Tifereth, which is to the right side of the tree of life. So that wound is in the right side of the Lord. Because it's where you find Hesed and Tifereth, which is in the center. And these are the mysteries of the light, which forgive sins. That is to say, these are the namings and the names of the light. The light is fire. The fire is light. Lucifer in Latin. That is the fire that circulates in your whole body. Is ing, circulating, hmm? feeding your whole self, physically, psychologically, spiritually. You see the marvelous mystery of the, the, of the rune ing was. So you find the symbol of. Uh, all the apostles, as in the previous lecture. But here, we put Martha there in the stomach. Because he's a special disciple of the Lord. Without Martha, we are lost. If you don't eat as we should eat always, concentrated in the Lord, you might have an indigestion. Meaning that Martha didn't do his work. But now it is because maybe you put something that is no good there. Martha is always suffering. And of course, related with the 12 apostles of the Lord, we wrought. Faith in the pineal gland produces strength in your kidneys. And the strength of your kidneys develops faith in your pineal gland. The strength in your kidneys is related with the Apostle Andrew. And the Apostle Andrew gives the sexual strength from the suprarenal glands above the kidneys. But Andrew and Peter are brothers because they depend on each other. That's why I said faith produces a strength and strength develops faith. Love without cognizance is destructive, yet together they produce Dharma. Love is John, that is always nourishing himself from the heart from the Lord Jesus. But cognizance is that understanding and comprehension that you have in your pancreas that helps the digestion. James the Elder is related with that pancreas. That's why in the previous lecture we stated that James the Elder and John are brothers. Love, but we have to know. Love is law. But love with cognizance, meaning comprehension, transformation. Because if you just love like that without comprehension, that is no good. That's why James the Elder we relate with the transformation of all the spirit of the forces of the energies of the body relate to, to John. Imagination creates and the creative power of the world expresses itself imaginatively. Who is imagination? Imagination is Bartolomeo, the apostle, led to the pituitary gland. You see his name, Bar, the sun. 
because in the Petri third line we have the sun, the atom of the sun. The atom of the father is in the root of the nose, and the atom of the Holy Spirit in the pineal gland. So Bartolomeo is the son of the warrior, the one that is always watching, related with the clairvoyance. And his brother is Philip, related with clairaudience, the power of the word. The power of the word. Philip is the one that writes, if you read the pieces of Sophia, he's the one that writes what the Master Jesus is stating. Philip. Because he knows the alphabet. Can you, can you imagine, for instance, Philip not knowing the 22 letters of the of Kabbalah, or the Hebrew alphabet? How he is going to write? Without knowing the alphabet, he cannot write. So he knows very well the alphabet. He knows the mystery of the word, written word. That's why it is written that some eunuch <laughs> or initiate. In other words, because when you write an eunuch means an initiate that is saving the sexual energy. That is a, is a eunuch for the kingdom of God. He's reading something in the Bible. He goes to Jerusalem. And then the Lord said to Philip, go next to him and explain what he's reading because he doesn't understand. What are you reading, says Philip to the eunuch. Well, this passage of Isaiah. What is this? Well, I don't understand. But Philip understands the word. It's a clarionic power that penetrates into the spirit of the word. And then he explains unto the eunuch the mystery of the verses that he is reading. And he explains about Yeshua and says, can I be baptized? Of course. You are an Egypt, you are a eunuch, you are saving your energy. I will teach you how to be baptized in the name of Jesus. And of course, he teaches that. He says symbolically that they descend into a river and is baptized. That that is symbolic. That river is Yesod. When you understand the word, when you understand the written word, you understand the wisdom. That's why in this day and age, you don't find people that listen and understand the word. The book of Revelation states, He who understands, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Let him hear. To hear is not, of course, in relation with the ears, but in relation with the throat, what Philip is. Philos, love, the one that knows the mystery of the word, the power of the word, the power of the tongue. That's why Philip, Clariadians, and Clarivoyans are together. Bartholomew and Philip, the two apostles, in you. You have to vocalize the vowel A for Philip and E for Bartholomew. Between them, they see what you must see. Because it's not only seeing with the clarifying eye, it's also understanding the symbols of what you see. And that's Philip. Wisdom and willpower always proceed hand in hand. <coughs> Who is wisdom? Comprehension, in other words. It's, it's Thomas. And willpower? Matthew. Located Matthew in the left side of the brain and Thomas, the right side of the brain. Between them, they work together. When you act with wisdom, that's why it is written in the pieces of here that there are three witnesses in heaven. And then, of course, Mary explains where well, those three witnesses in heaven is Matthew, Thomas, and Philip. Because Philip is the scribe. He's the intellectual that is writing what the inner spirit is telling you. 
and Thomas and Matthew, which are the superior parts of the brain, are the ones that also are writing, because in order to write what you have to write, or to read what you have to read, you have to use your brain. Faculties of the apostles within yourself. You see? That is in relation with ing was. Because it's the activity of your faculties. How are you going to enter into the mysteries of Gnosis if your faculties are not active, if your 12 fruits of the tree of life are not active? You have to develop them. Order and seal advance alongside with sexual transmutation. Sexual transmutation is the science of, of uh, Peter. But in this case, enters the life, the power of the sex life, which is Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot is in relation with the power of the sex. And of course... Order and seal are related with the appendix and with your hit brain, hit brain, which are related with the activities of the fire in your spinal column. Remember that unfortunately, Judas Iscariot is mingled with sexual desire. Sexual transmutation combined with psychological elimination, which is related with Judas Tadeus, that apostle, brings order and seal inside of us. All of these faculties are divided and enhanced as they are developed. Thus, the creative power of the word placed at the root of the tongue govern taste, control action of the larynx, and the weight of the word control the action of the initiate. Order is divided as harmony, peace, and bless. Faith grants confidence, sexual strength, energy. Imagination and visualization complement each other. Cognizance also means justice, right judgment, upright appreciation of the facts. Seal, and, seal is accompanied by enthusiasm that without control becomes religious or political fanaticism. Without control or without order, in other words. If you don't control your seal, the love that you have for the knowledge, you become fanatic. There are many fan a lot of fanaticism among the Gnostics in this day and age. So fanatics, because they don't control the zeal, the enthusiasm. You have to have a, a control in, in, in your faculties. An excessiveness of seal is fanaticism. Life relates res results from transmutation and health. Results. Elimination relates to depuration from toxins, digestion, and the depuration from all negative thoughts and emotions. So when you study the 12 apostles, you understand how them relate to your physicality and with your psychology. Remember that the Master Samaelon Behor states that we had to develop the 12 fruits of the tree of life. The tree of life, of course, is the spinal column. Remember that. And for that, you have to work very hard with willpower in order to develop this. When I say this, it's coming into my mind. Jesus Christ tied to the column and the soldiers of Pontius Pilate whipping his back with a whip. Hmm? Do you understand that symbol? Because many times people talk about that and there are certain organizations there that think that they have to whip themselves physically in order to advance in this path. They do not understand that the whip represents willpower. And of course, represents the willpower that you have to develop against the soldiers of Pilate. 
Pilate is the mind. The soldiers of Pilate are all of those defects, vices, and errors related with lust, lasciviousness. And in order to defeat that, the Lord is tied to the column, to the pillar, which is your spinal column. When you are doing super efforts in order not to fall into temptation, you exercise willpower. When you are trying to defeat any temptation on the path, whether karmic temptation or any type of temptation, that is the will that you have to use, terema, in order to go ahead and receive the whippings in your back. Especially when you are doing sexual magic. The Lord hold it himself and receive 5,000 lashes. Five is karma. So the Lord is punished inside of us when we are doing transmutation, when we doing work. He receives the karma. This is how he receives it. In the spinal column. But if you are a fornicator, the Lord is not there. You want the Lord tied to your spinal column? Be chaste. Because the Lord is in transmuting, transforming. He is the action of the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In active in you. And when it is acting in you, of course, the enemies of the Lord, which are your defects, vices, and errors, whip him without mercy in his back. And this is how uh, they initiate, together with the Lord, suffers. This is how Pistis Sophia suffers. But remember that the Lord had to give many steps inside of us. The first step is the creation of the bodies. Now the first denial of Peter. After sacrifices and sacrifices, when you deny the Lord, and the Lord is, because remember, when Peter is denying the Lord, the Lord is tied to the column. And he is just watching how he is judged. And he's denying the Lord in suffering. But the Lord is receiving and receiving the punishment. But that punishment, punishment relates to the initiate, the karma of the initiate. And the Lord suffers and passes the ordeals of fire, water, earth, and air, the square. The in was rune. And if you observe the shape of the rune, you, you will find Yorida and Pingala. Like a entwined serpents that goes around your spine. So you have to create first pistis within you. Remember that Peter is pistis, faith. You have to create that pistis. You have to receive the tower of bell on top of your head, the fire. Of the first serpent, of the second serpent, of the third serpent. The electronic force, the solar light of the Lord, which is electronic, which is soul. Because we are an embryo of soul. And we have to create soul. To create soul is to create the internal bodies. So once the internal bodies are created, we have pistis already made there. Because the one that made that is the Holy Spirit. Pistis, in the pineal gland. And with pistis is ready, then Sophia descends. In order to perform the second denials of the Lord within us. It's the path of ing. The path of inguas. Of fro. That was killed by lucky. Lust. 
So, do you realize that? The mystery Let me read this for you uh, to finalize with this Rune Ingwes. In the final synthesis, each one of us is nothing more than an atom from the after absolute space, which is the interior atomic star, the Ein Sof, that always smiles upon us. A, cert a certain author has said, I raised my eyes toward the almost, toward the stars from which for me all help has to come. But I always follow the inner star which guides my interior, which I see when I lift my eyes into my own head. Because that is what you find Yehu. If you want to receive that marvelous power of Yehu, vocalize in order to activate these three atoms in your head. We must make a specific differentiation between the Ein Sof and the Ein Sof Paranishpana. In the Ein Sof, interior self-realization does not exist. But in the Ein Sof Paranishpana, realization of the innermost self does exist. So that innermost or the Ein Sof Paranishpana is the, the self-realized monad or the Ein Sof self-realized that makes of us a para Marta Satya, an inhabitant of Sat, like the Master Jesus, an inhabitant like Master Samael, that received the strength, even though from the 12th Ian, in order to teach us. Because we are just simple and soft without self realization. Only the masters are self realized realization, the resurrected masters who are called satyas. And behold, there are many people that in this day and age appear in the website and call the same satya. Satya this, satya that. They are not satyas. The only satya that I know is Jesus of Nazareth from the 13th Ian, a para Marta satya, from sat. The Ain. And below him, there are other masters, of course, which are from the 12th Ian or the 11th Ian. We then reach the level of Solomon, the one that enters into the Ain of Or, is Solomon. Do you know what is that? Surely man, the man of peace. That they, are, that they have the peace of Keter inside of them, and therefore they go into the ends of Or. Soli man or Soli man is the solar man. Soli sun. Soli man. Solomon. Now, Solomon is a solar man thanks to Shulamit. The beautiful Shulamit. The divine soul. If you inquire in a Hebrew language, you will see how Shin, Mem, Nun, Lamed, Shalomon is written with those letters. And Shulamit also has the same letters. And another name that appears in the Gospels, in the Gospels of uh, the New Testament. The mysterious dancer, Shalome, the same letters. Salomon, Shalome, same, but it's feminine. Salome is how you say it, but it's written with Shin, it's the fire of the ends of or, Shalome. That's why when you study the Repentances of Pisti Sophia, you find that the eleven repentance which relates to the ends of or is uh, resolved by Salome, which is Shalomit or Shalom. 
peace, shalom, Solomon, the daughter of the fire, the consciousness that enters into the ends of all. That's why did Salome dances the dance of the seven veils before Herod. Who is Herod? He is your sinful mind that wants to steal the wisdom of the Lord. He wants to be enlightened with the ego inside. And Salome dancing says, here is one veil, look the truth. Here is another veil, look the truth. I have the truth, but you don't deserve the truth. You want to deserve it? I will give it to you. But give me first the head of John the Baptist. And then Herod says, oh my goodness. He's asking the head of John the Baptist. And in his head is where I live. Because I am the mind, the sinful mind within that head. That is always accusing me of adultery. That the Bodhisattva, you know. If I behead him, I will be sentenced to death. And Salome is wise. That was says, give me that and I will tell you the truth. And with the beheading of John the Baptist, the consciousness, not the truth, but not as Herod. Because Herod has to die. Do you see the mystery there? Of Salome, the feminine aspect of the consciousness, in the age of Or, Sulamit, Solomon. It's the same. To reach that level, you have to work very hard. To become a, an ains of Paranishpana. The master says, let us know, don't forget that Merkava is the child of the centuries. The heavenly human being of the Kabbalah. Merkava is the chariot. It's the square. Hmm? Of Ingwas. We were always talking about the inferior square, but now it's superior square. Or quaternary, in other words. The physical body, Christified. The astral body, Christified. The mental body, Christified. And the causal body, Christified. That's the square. The chariot. Which the Lord, your monad, rides on. That is Ingwas. And in order to create that square, that in superior quaternary, physical, astral, mental, and causal bodies, you have to be in chastity. You have to work with pistis, with energy. And this is how it does. Thus, if we do not build the chariot, the Merkava, then the innermost self, the aim of, remains without realization. Those who have not eliminated the Abhayan Samskara, the innate fear, will flee from the night sphere by telling to others that the work in the forge of the Cyclops, sexual alchemy, is worthless. Worthless for the fornicators. But those that know how to transmute with the science of Peter, they build the, the chariot. That's why in the previous lecture I told you, the master says that he saw the chariot and three charioters. And inside of the chariot was Peter, because he is the one that built the chariot. Peter built the chariot, and then when the chariot was done, says, now I need three charioters, but I need to, to build with the, ch the three charioters. And Peter enters inside because he is the one that built it. Build my church. Peter is the head of the church because Peter is in your head. And it's also in the altar, in the Ara, which is the Asad. Because he is the Lord of the whole work, the great work. For well, those that said that the fortune of the Cyclops is worthless, these are the hypocritical, hypocritical Pharisees who strained uh, at a gnat and swallowed a camel. These are the failed ones who neither go into the kingdom themselves, neither suffer they, those who are entering to go in. Indeed, sex is a stumbling rock and rock of offense. First, we work with Peter, and when Peter builds the church, the internal bodies, then Ing comes and incarnates and works through John, the Word. 
Questions? Do you have questions? Yes? Um, in the quote of the Sister Sophia, uh, Jesus mentions that the, the fire and the, the water came from the treasury of the light and the, the wine and the blood came from Bardal. Is there a distinction between the treasury of the light and Bardal, or are they the same? The same. I guess that the, the way that is written there, but the wine, the blood, the water, and uh, the fire came from the region of Barbello, all of them. Even if they are unfoldments of the same force, they always come from, the, from Barbello. Because the wine, when, for instance, when the priest who is in chastity, who knows what he's doing, he brings the fire from Barbello first. He's on Barbello. His pineal gland is concentrating in his own God, his own inner particular glory end. And said, Father, brings down from me the forces of Barbello, the light of the universal God of the ends of ore. And then this end blesses the wine and the bread and the discharge with the Lord. He is only a vehicle. Hmm? And then that fire comes from above. When you are doing your sexual transmutation, you have to often concentrate in your pineal gland, in Keter, in the ends of Or, which is the Lord, the cosmic Christ, descending into you and going to transmute the water. Because the water and the wine are for the purification and forgiveness of sins. Right? It means that we need to transmute, but we need also the Eucharist. If we avoid the Eucharist, thinking that we are going to do it just with the water, we fell into confusion and we don't go ahead. And that's the, the, the problem of many Gnostics, that they refused the, the wine of the Eucharist. And the blood, of course, is charged with energy in our body, which is the symbol of the human body. If we know how to eat, because Martha will distribute that into all the glands, and now for the glands to give us the power, the inner senses. So everything comes from Barbello, for the sun of light. Question? How does one know, how does one know what is right to perform the tenth step to the church? And should it be performed every day? The question is, how do we know? When we are ready. When we are ready for the true sensation, for the transubstantiation. And should we perform it every day? Uh, yeah, of course. It has to be every day. Or, or, I mean, if you are... In the, in, the, in the Gnostic Church, it's, it's, it's performed in certain days. But for that, you have to enter into the second chamber. It's where you perform the mysteries of the wine. right? And it's given only to those that are in chastity. Because first, you have to transmute your water. When the initiate knows how to transmute the water and then receives the wine. But it's not that you are in perfect chastity. Because the wine, the fire of the Lord, is received to the Eucharist in order for you to understand and comprehend many things. In order to receive strength. Because one is weak. When do we need it? Right now we need it. Every day we need it. There are certain groups that say, oh no, you have to first to know this, to know that, etc. Yeah, you have to know the mysteries of the light in order to understand that. That's why we give you this lecture. When you understand it, you are ready. But you have to be serious. Mm -hmm. In order to receive that help that all of us need. The transubstantiation. And this uh, uh, ceremony of transubstantiation, which is the ceremony of the wine, uh, is performed by a priest. But if he is in chastity. If he is a pedophile, no. It doesn't work. It had to be in chat. It had to be serious. Of course, uh, you had to work with your chat in order to receive it. You don't have to, to reach out many think the level of Christ or without ego in order to do it. No. If we wait for that, all of us will be condemned. Unfortunately, we have the mysteries and we distribute them in systematic manner for all of those that need it. The one that performed that mystery is not a special. 
none of us is special. We need the energy. We need the force. All of us are in hell. It's not that we are going to hell. It's that we are in hell, in the inferior regions. So we need to go out of it. One discovers that he's going out of hell. Is he going in was out of hell? When one is leaving the hell. Once you are inside, you don't realize it. But then so all of a sudden you awake and say, oh my goodness, I'm in hell. I didn't know that. Hmm? If people are afraid of going into hell, they don't realize that, well, at least in the first sphere, limbo. But others are there worshiping the other spheres of limbo, I mean of, of hell. Do you have another question? Let me tell you one thing in order for you to understand this. It happened to me many years. When the Master Samael on the door was giving this lecture related to the negative emotions, Alcyon. I don't know if you read that or if you heard the lecture. He said that the negative emotions turn us into liars and all that. And the rings of Alcyon and all that. At that epoch, of course, I was listening like you. And always imagining the star Alcyon and the seven, the seven, uh, how you call, uh, Pleiades. Hmm? Master said that our seven sun is the seventh of the Pleiades. The sun that is shining on ourselves is the seventh of the Pleiades. Said, that are rotating around Alcyon. Then I enter into meditation and with all the clues that the Master give us, concentrated in Alcyon. I want to see this. Physically I cannot because I need a UFO. But in the astral plane, I know I have my astral body, I can do it. So I went into meditation and then I was out of my body and I said, my God, my Lord, please show me. The rings of Alzion. Then my God, my internal God, took me to a field and threw me down in that field. And then I saw the fences of that particular field and a rooster on top of that fence singing twice. And then I saw the sunrise. And then he threw me out into my body. And I said, what? <laughs> what this rooster and with this rising of the sun and this field has to do with Alcyon? And, and I said, oh, let us comprehend and meditate this symbol. Then I understood. Alcyon is a sun, is a Christ. And any sun. Hmm? Of course, if I want to see that, before the rooster sings twice, you will deny me thrice. I said, oh. So I had to walk in the path and defeat the three denials. That's not easy. If I want to be inside of the rings of Alcyon, inside of the light of the Lord, Master Samael at that time was already there. Was going to enter into the rings, you know. And then I understood all. Oh, the microcosmos is called the microcosmos of the macrocosmos. Whatever happens in the macro is repeated in the micro. In the micro, which is a man, it happens initiatically. And in the macro, well, as you see, stars move around. Then I understood that Alcyon is in relation with the Lord in the initiatic path. I'm not saying that those rings doesn't exist. They exist. But why we have to worry about that? It's better to be concerned with the Alcyon, with the Lord. The rings of Alcyon, we will say is like the ends of all, the light. As we explained in the other lecture. Hercolobus is also related with the Lord. Before Alcyon, he's Hercolobus, initiatically speaking. Now, if you are just want to see phenomenon, 
the phenomena there in the sky it will happen sooner or later. But we, the Gnostics, are interested in our microcosmos. Because whether we believe it or not, things will happen in the universe. But we want to happen in our own particular universe, microcosmos. So, meditate. Because I have to meditate. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,